I want a heart that forgets, a heart full of love, one with compassion just like yours above, one that overcomes evil, goodness and love, like it never happened, never holding a grudge, want a heart that forgets, that lives and lets live, one that Loving over and over again, one that men can offend because your word is them, one that loves without price like you, Lord Jesus Christ, one a heart that loves everybody, even my enemies, one to love like you, be like you, just like you. I want a heart that forgives. Want a heart that forgets when the ones that are closest that I've known the longest hurt me the most. I still. want a heart that forgets when the pain is so deep it's so hard to speak about it to anyone just like your son I give up my right to hold it against them with hatred inside I want a heart that loves everybody even my want to love like and be like and just like and be. I want to walk like and talk like, just like you did. want to be like and live like, just like you did. Greetings and blessings and welcome to the Fuel for Your Journey podcast. This is Dee Sally, and I am excited to be joining you again. It's been a minute since we've come together to um, bring you empowering and inspiring conversations that will fuel your journey. I'm excited, extra excited tonight, actually, because we have a special guest um, joining us. Um, If you've been connected with me online, you know that um, we are about to release an an anthology called Graceful Seasons. Six women of faith have come together to bring you their testimony, or should I say a portion of their testimony, a snippet of their journey that is going to bless your soul. These stories are stories of triumph, stories of victory, and God's faithfulness through the seasons of life. And You'll actually get an opportunity to meet all the authors via the podcast. But our first uh, guest for the, to, tonight, the first author that's going to be joining us, her name is May, Mrs. May Golden, and she has a chapter within the Graceful Seasons anthology called My Father's Daughter. Welcome, May. Hi, Dee. Thank you for having me on your show. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm so excited that you're joining us tonight. um, Like I mentioned before, it's been a minute since we've actually had a recording of the podcast, but I'm definitely, definitely excited to have you ladies on and tonight to have you on. So your chapter is called My Father's Daughter. Can you – I didn't want to go into reading your full bio, but I'll just – give um, the listeners just a brief snippet of who you are. May Golden is a born-again believer who feels honored to be a wife, a mother, a godmother, and a trusted friend. She spent her early adult years being a military wife and raising her three children. It was during this time that she learned just how much she loved using her hands to make crafts, bake, 
sew, gardening, et cetera, et cetera. Entering the workforce after her children were in school helped her to realize her love of learning and teaching others. And this eventually led her to a master's degree in instructional design. Currently, May has two businesses. She has an instructional design-based business and also a jewelry, custom jewelry business. And she also has aspirations towards a third business and also getting her blog up and running. May would be the first to say her walk with God has been eventful, exciting, and challenging, but she wouldn't change a thing constantly amazed by what she learns and unlearns about God, his love, and his grace towards her. She is thoroughly certain that every action, good or bad, is still moving her towards and in God's purpose for her life. And for that, she is grateful. So, May, um, I shared a little bit about you, but tell um, our listening audience, audience, something about you that was not shared in your bio, and also um, a little about your story and why, at this point in your journey, you um, are stepping out there to share it. Well, um, a little about myself that wasn't in the bio is that though I am not originally from Maryland, I'm from Ohio. I am a Marylander in that I love my crap. Um, I know that's right. (laughs) (laughs) Um, A little bit about my story. I think you've basically covered it. Um, A lot of my learning as far as life and God, I think, took place more so after being um, being in the military when my husband retired. But it was uh, learning how to depend on God in a different way and learning what it meant to have a true relationship with him. Because, um, you know, when you're young, at least in my case, when I was young, I basically did whatever I was told and didn't question and and mm-hmm. um did some did my own learning as far as reading scripture and that sort of thing, but there were were no back and forth conversations with God, and what I learned later is that you know God is not scared of that back and forth conversation he mm-hmm. can't handle himself, so uh my questions yeah. didn't scare him and things like that, so that has been a very cool aspect of my life and of my walk with him. Uh, Why I chose to share that particular story was because I carried a lot around um, emotionally, maybe even spiritually too, because of the, uh, the relationship that I had with my dad as I saw it. Uh... You know, you get to a certain age and you realize that your parents are fallible and uh, they no longer wear the superhero outfit or suit. They are men and women and they're just trying to do it and live through life the best way they know how. So um, choosing that particular story, I would say, was so because it was somewhat of a foundational story for me. Amen. So... You know, we know that we don't want to um, tell um, the listeners everything that you've shared within your story, within the anthology, but you, can you just, um, like, give them an idea um, of exactly what was going on with that relationship? Like, um, what was the, the nature of the relationship with your dad and how did it, it affect you? And um, like you said, because it was a foundational relationship, and we know that our foundational relationships, those with our mother and our father, are extremely important when it comes to a child growing up. And they are our first uh, te- te- they are our first teachers. 
So, you know, we pretty much learn certain things, whether good or bad, at an early age. So just, you know, tell us a little bit. You know, again, we you don't want you to share the fullness of your story um, because that's going to be found within the book. But just to give the listener an idea of your experience. Um, I was the last child to be born. Um, my parents were both married prior, and so um, as a result of their union, I was the the child that was born, and I was the youngest of seven in total. And so um, there's that dynamic where, you know, regards to siblings, there is mm-hmm. the dynamic of being the last one and being the one at home, um, because some of my siblings were quite a bit older, and therefore they were either out or on their way out. Mm-hmm. Um, you get to see a bird's eye view of relationships, you know, parents' relationship and that sort of thing. And learning how, or rather learning that, uh, your parents are really a, a filter for you of what God is like, um, even before you know anything about God. So Mm -hmm. when you do learn about God, when you think God, you automatically think they must be like your folks. They're like, and in my case, you must be like my dad. And so um, coming to grips with that and being willing to to understand some other things because, you know, as we grow up, our, our filters change, and they change mm-hmm. based on the experiences that we have. And uh, I do believe, though, that because the Word says that God uses all things and he'll work all things out together for the good of them who love him, that he does exactly that. So as as we grow and mature... Those filters change, and you get a, in my case, I got a chance to see how God really was. Um, But in order to do that, I had to change the filter, be willing for the filter to be changed. And, uh, you know, sometimes there's there's, there's not a willingness to do that, where you become comfortable Mm -hmm. in situations and you become comfortable with, experiences and we become comfortable with the emotions that go along with those experiences so uh, I have did find though that God continues to nudge by his spirit to get us to change and that's what he did for me um, no. you know that working along with because of the relationship I had uh, with my dad I saw myself a certain way and there were there were some things that I just really resented, um, you know, uh, personality flaws, I'll say, that I just I really resented because, one, you resent them because they're like somebody that, <laughs> that you know. To remind you of. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I ain't like that. Um, <laughs> but then on the other side, you resent them because you never thought you were like that. And it, when it, it rubs up against what God has said for you, that forces uh, that forces some action on your part, and it will be either you will seek to change, or you will de- defy and stay the same. Wow, that's powerful. So, you know, in all of this experience that you had. Um, what was the greatest lesson that you learned, you know, along that particular journey um, as it pertained to that season in your life? The greatest um, lesson that you took from that? That it much depends on um, where the person is when you decide to make some changes. And some things 
that you think are flaws are really okay. They're not flaws. You see them as flaws mm-hmm. because you don't understand them. But okay. they're not flaws. They are really what builds strength to your own character and personality. So learn to be okay with some things uh, because... A lot of, at least for me, a lot of my disgruntledness could be used by the adversary to beat me with. And and I hope that statement is clear. Um, just by way of a, a simple example, um, the, when when we were kids, the same kids who egged you on to fight would be the first ones to say, "They started." You, she started. <laughs> mm-hmm, she started. I saw it when she threw. You know, um, right. And so, the things that I struggled with, that I thought were flaws, the enemy could use to um, to beat me with the Mm-hmm. You know, to pick on me with. But when the Lord helped me to to realize, no, that's a good thing. It's a good thing that that's in your life because of X, Y, and Z. Then that took mm-hmm. the steam out of the adversary's ability to beat on me with that. So that that um, coming to that place of understanding um, basically helped you to just. Dis- arm the, the enemy's plan at work in your life because I likewise I believe that um, he tries to use those things like you said that we see as flaws or our weaknesses our, our limitations and tries to back us in a corner um, and get us to to beat ourselves up you know mm-hmm. unnecessarily you know because when you were talking about um how the flaw is really a good thing. It made me think of the scripture, um, you know, where God says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, you know, how he int- intricately made us with different character, us all with different characteristics. And um, you know, it makes me think of, it's funny, I don't know why Peter is coming to mind. Uh, was Peter the one that was biting off ears in his former life? Uh, not in his former, in his current. He bit off the ear and, uh, when they were coming to get Jesus. He cut mm-hmm. off the guy's ear. And Jesus was like, yeah, dude, all right, blow right, your rope. That's right, because he was trying to defend him. <laughs> <laughs> blow your rope, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> right, like, calm down. You know, I'm just thinking how, you know, we all are um, something before we come to know God. And it's those things that he takes, the things that we look at as bad or flaws or weaknesses, he eventually has a plan to use those things in a mighty way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, that was your greatest lesson in coming to know that flaws really, you know, aren't a bad thing. Right. And the way that the word suggests. Right. So Tell us, how has your life changed for the better since God victoriously brought you through, you know, um, coming to grips with the fact that, and I quote, unquote, that you were your father's daughter? I had to learn what the word said about me based on God's eyes. I, I wasn't aware mm-hmm of what the word said in regards to how God sees me as his daughter. Um, I just knew that I was my dad's daughter and I served God. And, you know, sometimes you you regret your parentage. But coming to grips and understanding some things about our parents and realizing that God has always been there was what helped me to realize that I was his daughter before I was my earthly father's daughter. And that being his daughter, um, 
has empowered me to live a certain way. And I'll, you know, while the situation was victorious, I'll also say, though, that I think that God used that particular situation as a foundation for other things that will happen later in my life. Um, mm. So, you know, your song, the song that you played, it was very poignant in that those are things we want. And as I call it, when I'm having one of my high holy days, yeah, I really <laughs> want to forgive, like he wants me to forgive, and I want to, you know, I, I want all that. But... um most of my week is probably spent not having high holy days. So um, <laughs> you're not by yourself. <laughs> you know, so therein it is um, still that that process of learning to trust God to change my heart to want the things that He wants and knowing that He can't do that while being patient with myself. Amen. So in other words, it's a process. Once you make the Girl, decision. We throw that <laughs> word around. Oh, my goodness. What, the process? It's a process. <laughs> oh, we've we got to come up with another term. Everything is a process. <laughs> <laughs> come on, give me another term. <laughs> oh, um, it. It's a situation. <laughs> no, it's a situation. <laughs> that's, that's a different a situation. <laughs> Ooh, situation. Takes a minute to walk out that thing sometimes. Oh, yeah. And I think that the, the deeper the seed goes, the harder the, I don't, I'm about to say process again, <laughs> the more difficult... <laughs> the more difficult that walk becomes. You know, you got to throw yourself, you know, head first into God's lap because, you know, to be honest, you know, it's it's like without him, there's no way that we could could do those things, you know, in the flesh. That's true. It's extremely That's true. hard for us to do in our own strength. And, and that makes me think of what the title of this book is, Graceful seasons you know you know we walk through certain seasons the the okay ones the difficult ones no matter what season it is whether it be your winter your spring your summer or your fall season it's God's grace that gets us over to victory you know yes we have a hand in it but without God's grace you know his direction his strength it would be um, practically difficult for us to, you know, to survive certain seasons. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What true. advice would you, amen, what, what advice would you give to someone who is in the same type of season that you were in going, um, walking through that season concerning your dad, um, that person who is hurt, disappointed, or discouraged? you know, because they don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. They don't know, you know, how they're going to forgive, you know, the person for whatever reason, or they don't, um, with the hurt is basically overtaking them and the disappointment because they're not seeing it like you came to see it as your, you know, your heavenly father was your father first and, the parents that you had were doing the best that they could with what they had, with what they were taught, what they had learned. And, you know, sounds like from what you've shared so far, you know, you, you came to this place of forgiveness. But there's a person who may be listening to this conversation and they may just be in that rock solid place of hurt, disappointment, and pain where I'm sure you were at one time. How would you minister to that person to encourage them? You know, I've said that we've had, all of us have had those times when we've been in church usually, and we've said, Lord, use me, make me, mold me, break me, all that. 
That was, you know, again, during one of those high holy times. Um, (laughs) But I believe that God hears that. And while he Mm -hmm. doesn't pounce on it, he does take the opportunity to do those things. Um, Anytime we've said, Lord, have your way in my life, I I do believe that Mm -hmm. he does that. So wherever you're at, especially if you have a relationship with God, ask him to give you the understanding that you need and then trust him to bring along the understanding. Ask him to help you to know when it's him and when it's not. Ask him to give you the discernment that you need because um, to use a common vernacular, be able to take situations and discern the chicken from the bone so that you don't lose you don't lose sight that God does have a greater end in mind for you and it's not just going home to heaven. God wants us to have a life down here. And what better way than to use you in your life to bring somebody else along? Because everything we go through, I would, Mm -hmm. if I was a betting person, I'd put money on it, D. Everything that we go through is designed to help somebody else. Mm -hmm. But so often we get frustrated with the situation that we're in (laughs) and the circumstances that are going on. And we either either we want totally out of it or we want it to hurry up and get over. Get over, right. But many you know, many situations are crock pot situations. Mm. You you're gonna be in them for a while. Don't believe the lie that the devil tells you. That you're not gonna make it. You don't see how you're gonna make it. It's always gonna be like this and and things like that. Understand there will be days when you do feel like that. That's real. Accept it as a moment in time, whether it's a day, an hour, a couple days, or a week. But know that your Redeemer lives, and he will get across to you what you need to know. But, like I said, we must be patient. We must be patient. Because, uh, you know, there's no benefit, and I've done a number of these in my life, especially when I was younger, cramming for a test, then you take the test, and you put all the information on the test, and then if you're asked the information a week later, you have no idea you what the information know it. is. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know. Oh, my um, goodness. <laughs> we, we want to be willing to get all the information and be able to point back to it because it is in our pointing back to that information that we're able to bring others forward and show them how victorious God is in our lives, even Amen. when we are at the worst and we feel like we're at our worst. Amen. So it sounds like you're saying when we're going through those um, dark seasons, I, well, I would even venture to say any season that we go through, we should be not just making mental notes of it, but journaling, keeping track of your experience, whether good, bad, or indifferent, and so that you can refer to it later because, like you mentioned before, everything that we go through, God typically is going to use it for us to minister to someone else, to witness to someone else, to let them know that trouble won't last always and oh, I can relate to that. I was in that situation. This is how, you know, I was able to endure it through God's grace, and this is how God brought me on the other side of it. Yes, especially if we're willing, if we're willing mm-hmm. to share that, mm-hmm. um, because sometimes we're not willing to be vulnerable enough to share. Yeah, And yeah. the reality of that vulnerability is that 
it opens it up for somebody else to see that they are seen. Amen. This situation is seen. Others have seen it, been through it, lived mm-hmm. it. Um, it. Yeah, it's not just a cross that they're having to carry, but someone else has experienced it as well. Right, right. Because I, I, I would say that all of us could probably um, testify to this, that whenever yeah. you've been in situations, especially certain ones, you felt alone. Mm-hmm. And that really is a, a, you know, a method that our adversary uses to make us feel alone, make us feel isolated. So when we're willing to, to you know, take off our super suits and, um, and say, no, no, I, no I, I've lived through that one. And yeah, yeah. yeah, God is still real. It took me a while to recognize that, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> <Get through>. Right. <laughs> I thought I was going to die. I mean, you know. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you know, um, but, but yeah, you know, like, as a believer, uh, yeah, you go through stuff, and the, the sooner that we're willing to admit that, and the going through stuff is is not the stuff that we sometimes get caught up in. They don't like me. They said this about me. They mm-hmm. tell us no, 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 no. Yeah, that's so my new deal going through. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll leave that one. Right. <laughs> Yeah, that's for another day, <laughs> another <laughs> podcast. You know what? You know why you were talking. I was thinking about you know if you basically segue into what the book, what my goal was for bringing you all together to share your stories. You know, a lot of um, we have a lot of authors out there. People are um, consistently writing books, um, and it's awesome. But one of the things God showed me was that there are everyday people, you know, people who aren't interested in writing a whole book about themselves, people who aren't necessarily in business and and doing the business of books, but people, everyday people who are going to work, taking care of their families, serving at their churches, um, even running, you know, businesses or what have you, and they have powerful stories to tell, powerful testimonies. It's just, you know, you may run into someone and you get to talking and they tell you what they've been through and you're like, wow. And I know in my case, I would always say, you need to write a book. <laughs> you need mm-hmm. to tell your story, you know. And, you know, so the podcast, when it was created, it was created so authors can come on and share the stories that they had written in their books. And the more I would host the different podcasts, you know, um, last year God laid on my heart that, again, there are individuals with stories, even some people that you may know, and they need to tell their stories because it will help someone else, like you said, to know that they aren't in this by themselves or, you know, they are not going to die where they are in, in that place in their story. So I'm excited that, you know, you were one of the individuals who um, stepped out boldly and courageously to, you know, share a portion of your journey with the world, you know, um, because I I truly believe that we have overcome by the blood of the land and by the word of our testimony. So our testimonies, you know, aren't, our lives are not our own. Our testimonies are are, are what God gives us to share with the world, to empower and encourage. And I would go as far as to say to 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 um to bring healing and set others free. So thank you for being a part of the Graceful Seasons anthology. I know I thanked you guys a million times, but I just want to publicly thank you for number one stepping out there to tell your story, and number two doing it within the Graceful Seasons Anthology. Uh, well, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for asking, and thank you for um, the inclusion. You're welcome. So I want to, what I want to do is, you know, we know that um, the book is, will soon be, rather, available for, um, to order. We're about to go to print soon. We're excited about that. And, um 
uh, I want you to be able to share for the individuals who are listening to this recording and they um, follow you or for those that you may share this conversation with, let them know um, how they can connect with you so that they'll be, um, so that they can connect with you on all your forums and so when the book does come out, that they can reach out to you um, to get their copy. Okay. Well, regarding the book, I have a blog that's called Blossoming Into Purpose, and it's just the way it sounds, spelled all the way out. Um, BlossomingIntoPurpose.com is the blog site. Add a forward slash in the word shop, S-H-O-P, and the book will be located on that tab. Um, I also have a Facebook page that is called Blossoming Into Purpose. And uh, I can be contacted through that. Otherwise, as you mentioned um, in the early part of our interview, um, I have a jury line, but the jury line is the one that's on Instagram and Facebook. That's called Curvy Girls Accessories, LLC. And my other business, Golden Business Processes. It's on the web, um, but I'm not on social media with that. I can be found in LinkedIn with that one. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, we're looking forward to being able to um, share your story with the world. You know, I personally have read your story, and I'm just, you know, you can know someone for a long, long time. And unless you intentionally sit down and say, tell me your story, you will be surprised at the things that individuals that you are connected to have experienced, the seasons that they have walked through, the grace that God has poured out upon their lives and brought them to the other side of certain things. So, you know, I'm telling you, if you're listening to this recording, you do not want to miss the opportunity to hear the portion of May Golden's journey um, based on her chapter, My Father's Daughter. Um, it, for me, it was eye-opening. You know, it was um, encouraging. I was happy to see the, the transformation that God um, has done in your life concerning that situation because, I like, like I believe we have already talked about, Sometimes we experience things, and unless we get real with ourselves and let God get real with us, we will stay trapped within them. But I want to salute you on your courage to face yourself, to, you know, get that revelation from God, um, you know, concerning how we all are frail, we all have weaknesses, um, and coming to the place where you realize that, you know, um, your parents weren't superheroes, but they were human, you know, that in itself is powerful. So um, so you, do, if you're listening to this, you don't want to miss the opportunity to get the Graceful Seasons Anthology. Stay connected to Mae Golden at the locations that she um, has offered up um, this interview will be posted on the Fuel for Your Journey YouTube page and we are also on Instagram under at Fuel for Your Journey and so we are excited. Stay connected with us, the, the Fuel for Your Journey um, podcast. Stay connected with Mae Golden if you currently follow her. And, or if you'd like to follow her, please connect with her to stay abreast of all the things that she is doing. I know um, the book is coming out, and, you know, I just see God doing great things in your life and also the lives of all the other authors because, you know, I truly believe that when we step out there and we become naked and unafraid and share our stories, that it starts off a chain reaction for that story to reach the individuals that it needs to impact. And um, we're just excited. Do you want to yeah. um, leave any last words um, for, you know, you want to talk about forgiveness at all? You just want to um, leave any last words? 
Well, we've heard that um, it often said by especially some of our prominent, prominent leaders that forgiveness is for your benefit as opposed to the person that you're forgiving. Um, and that unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. I think that to was Pete Jakes who mm-hmm. said that. Understand that the act of saying, I forgive you, is totally different from the process of forgiving. Mm-hmm. Because there is truly a process in forgiving. You may feel like, mm, I said it, but you know, I don't feel it. I think that that's also stepping out on faith and even saying it and then as my pastor says you remind yourself that you said it so take the opportunity review your life the Lord brings something to mind somebody to mind some hurt to mind and wants to address it with you be willing and if he says you need to forgive them be obedient there is a blessing in being obedient that's it. Amen. And obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. 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 So thank you, May, for taking time out um, to join the Feel for Your Journey podcast, coming on to share your story that will be enclosed within the Graceful Seasons Anthology. Uh, we're looking forward um, not only for the book, actually um, being released, but we're, at, we're looking forward to meeting um, a lot of you who may be tuned in in person. We will be having a book release that has not been scheduled or confirmed yet, but it will be coming up soon. We'll also, um, you know, be going out and sharing on um, various media outlets. So stay connected and so that you can be abreast and so that you can even join us in person or um, via the different media outlets that we'll be um, attending. So thank you again for tuning in to another empowering episode of the Fuel for Your Journey podcast. My name is D. Sally, a.k.a. D. Life Mentor Coach. I am excited and grateful that you tuned in to join us. Please stay connected. May was one of the first authors of the Graceful Seasons Anthology, but we will have the remaining authors coming on and sharing a little bit about their story and how you can um, get a copy of the book in your hand. It's truly going to bless you. I'm not just saying that um, because I'm the compiler or part of it, but it truly blessed me, and I know that it will truly bless you. Thank you again for tuning in. Take care, and God bless. Cause the heart that forgives is the heart that will live Totally free from the pain of the past And the heart that lets go is the heart that will know so much freedom Lord, I want to let it go God, I
can have, Lord, you can have, Lord, you can have it, Lord, you can have it, uh, you can have it now, you can have it now, I don't want it. 